Hello and welcome to the Scratch Coding class. In today's video, we are going to be creating a line following robot. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. These are the pieces that you'll need for your line following robot. And there is only one new piece here, I think. This is basically a non friction pin that can spin freely in a round hole. And we are only using one color sensor today uh, because we are only given one in the kit. But it is possible to follow a line using two. And there are 22 black friction pins over there, it's very difficult to see, but there are 22 of them. And I think you can count everything else, so let's just get started. Okay, we're going to start with the motors, so we're going to have our left motor first. Put an axle through it, this is a 7 long axle. Put it right through, make sure it goes through both ends. And then we're going to add a yellow spacer, so this one. And then after that you're going to add one wheel, and you want the flat side facing the yellow spacer, like so. Push it right in. And then over here we're going to add two black friction pins and then you're going to add a 13 long beam. This is a 13 long beam. Put it right at the end, make sure it goes through everything like that. You're going to add a red spacer and that is one motor complete. And all you have to do now is repeat the same with the other motor. Okay, we've got our two motors built. Now we need to join them together. So we're going to get this piece, put it here and do the same with the other side except we're going to mirror it so it's going to be like this and then we're going to have a seven long beam we're going to join it together like so and we're going to be adding the color sensor over here but we're not going to do that just yet we need to secure the back because the back is still loose get a 15 long beam we're going to put a pin here at the very end we're going to put one here so you need to leave a gap from the very end one and then we're going to do that with the other side like so and then after that you want to secure the uh, top and this bit is very very difficult to do so I'm gonna get these two in and then get the other two in there we go that's the top done you want to repeat the same with the bottom so I'll see you when I finish that so now we're gonna be adding the brick to the robot so get this angle piece and you're gonna need a pin here and it's a blue one and then you want the black one here and you want it like this so is slooping up towards the color sensor part so make sure you have it slooping up the correct way or it's not going to work you're going to repeat the same to the other side so we'll, i'll just do that very quickly now and then we have uh, these red pins beside me over here and we're going to add one here but don't push it all the way in just yet we're going to add one here and then you're just going to repeat the same to the other side so we're going to add one here and we're going to add one up there and then we need to place the brick so this is our brick right now and we're gonna have our brick so it looks like this and make sure you get the holes lined up perfectly and then you're just gonna push it in through the holes I'm gonna do the same to the other side and this brick is sitting at an angle which is a really cool design I really like that there we go that is our brick attached and now we're gonna do the support for the back so now we're going to be adding the support and we're going to get this piece, we're going to put a wheel one side, put a seven long beam and the very end of it here and then we're going to add the other wheel and this is going to be the support for the back of our robot like this and the reason why we're not using one big front wheel this time like we've done with our previous robots is because when you turn you want to have minimal contact with the ground and that one big front wheel there was too much friction, it was very difficult turning, it wasn't as smooth and we ideally would like a ball bearing instead of this but there are no ball bearings in the kit but this is still perfectly fine there's not much contact points with the ground so we can use this but we need to attach this to a right angle to this beam and that is the big problem however there's a really easy solution so we get these two pieces put them in an angle like this so that would actually go on probably like this and then you're going to add one of these axles put it through and it's very difficult to get through there we go we've got it through and you just basically have to do that with the other side and I've already done that right here and we're gonna get our blue pin I'm gonna put two of these here you're gonna put the beam and you're gonna put it in not this these not these two holes but these two holes and then we're gonna add the other side and now we have our support that can go like this and that, uh, the next bit is quite easy to do we just need our black beam we're going to add one 
pin here. I'm going to add one pin at the bottom and I'm going to add two pins right here. There we go. And we can add that here. And you just have to repeat the same thing with the other side. And then what you can do is you, you need to see where the middle is. You're going to put the pins in here. And that is one of the sides done. You can do the other side yourself. I'm going to move on to the color sensor. So now we're going to be adding our color sensor and the color sensor needs to be facing down, ideally maybe one or two centimeters above the ground. So we're going to add an axle here and then we're going to add an axle here. So we have two axles and then we're going to get this piece. We're going to put one end like that and make sure it's facing this way, that piece. And we're going to do the same thing above and then we're going to do the exact same with the other side. And then after that we're going to get these pins, we're going to put one through like that and then we're going to do the same thing with the other side and then we're going to flip it around, place it in these two holes and there we go, that's our colour sensor attached and you could use like a frame over here instead of the design I've got but because I've been working on other robots I've used all my frames so unfortunately I have to do this design but you can change this design to use a frame if you know what I'm talking about, one of those square frames. And that is our robot complete. All you need to do is just add the wires. I'm going to do that myself. And now let's do some programming. Okay, so to understand the concept of line following a wee bit better, I'm just going to do a simple drawing. So let's say we have a black line here. We have a sensor. And the sensor is on the black line. So what the robot is going to do is it's always going to steer slightly to the right. Like that. And then when the sensor says white, and then it's going to steer slightly to the left. And then it sees black again, it's going to go slightly to the right and so on. And it's not going to be as extreme as this drawing, but that is just how line following works. It steers one direction, then when it sees um, a, a colour, it's going to steer the other direction. And you might think that over here, you have just a line and it's just going to follow the line like that. However, it isn't. It's going to follow the line in a zigzag motion like that. Okay, now we've got the actual program and this is uh, our program right here. So we are using a timer function. I'm going to get it to follow the line for 35 seconds, but it's entirely up to you how long you follow the line for. So we have a timer function. And then if the brightness is less than a certain value, you need to see what value works best for you. It depends on your environment. My personal value is 17 over here. And uh, what it does, if, if it's less than 17, which means that's most likely going to be the black line, then it's going to steer slightly to the right. So the left motor is a higher power than the right motor. And notice the powers here are very, very low. You really, really want to have low powers when you're line following. And then if it isn't, then motor B moves at 10%, motor C is at 35%, it's moving slightly more. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to show you the robot driving around a curved black line. So that's why I've got to use a bigger value but you can just keep that like 25% and it will work perfectly if you are just following a straight line and then we have this message here we're going to broadcast it and then wait and the wait bit basically just means I'm not going to run the program until the message is finished so we wait for these messages to run and this is simply just moving forward for 0.2 seconds and that is basically the whole program finished it's not that difficult honestly and now I'm going to show you it in action Okay, so the robot is ready to go. Okay, it's on the edge of the line now. And I am using the LEGO Mindstorms NXT test pad, to, um, but you can, of course, just make your own black line by using your uh, white paper and then maybe putting tape over it. Perfect. It's doing this curve really, really well. Okay, it's trying to get on the line now. That bit wasn't flat, so that's on the line now. And perfect, that's it. So it's complete. Look how much it followed, this whole distance. So that just shows you how powerful line following can really be. And now that is going to be it for today's video of the Scratch Cooling class. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.